Hey guys, welcome back to the Passing Money Plan. Um, today, our topic is going to be on something that maybe is not um, believed in this world, but people that have financial literacy, if especially, let's just say me and Kirby, if we go broke to zero, we could go back to where we're at now. Right, yeah. And, and I think... Kobe Sanchez said it best. If you know the framework of how money works, then you'll be fine. Um, and then in this social media landscape in space, you always hear you know, people saying what rich people do with their money. But they're talking about from a perspective of they're already rich. This is what they do with their money because they're rich. All right. So I'm just going to... And then I'll go first and then Alex, you can follow up on what you would do. But if I went broke, so let's say today with this with this game, Alex, I'm gonna have to ask you a couple rules because I don't want to, you know, speak out of turn. So when you say going broke, are we talking about individually? We're broke, we have nothing, family's gone, or are you saying broke as broke with the family that that I have or you have? How you want to do this? Let's just say broke with the family. I mean, we have families. I mean, okay, yeah, okay, perfect. That that's perfect for me. All right, so me, if I let's just say it went bust today. I mean, this is step by step exactly what I would do. And some of these things that I'm telling you is other things that I still plan on implementing once my son gets a little older. But if I went broke today, so let's say I wake up, stock portfolio is zero, 401k portfolio is zero, Roth IRA portfolio is zero. Um uh, Real estate somehow nuclear blast. I don't know. I don't know. It's gone. Everything's gone. This is exactly and it's because I understand the framework of how money works. This is exactly what I would do. And everything that I say, parts of this stuff I still practice to this day because I've always had that mindset of, hey, I want to be trained in certain areas. So the this is the first thing I would do. I got my cell phone. My cell phone plan is still on. Can I keep my cell phone plan? I still got my cell phone. All right. So this is what I would do. And this is no BS. And literally this week, I've been working on this. I mean, just aspects of it. So the first thing I would do, I would open up Facebook. I would go to your marketplace. And then I would look up everything that people say is free. Everything. And what I would do, I would, or I would send my wife to go grab everything that's free. Yeah, I'm burning gas, but let's let's say I'm picking up five, ten things a month. I mean, a week. Let's say five, ten things a week. I know there's more out there, but let's just say I'm picking up five, five, ten things a week. And then if I can go get these things for zero and then just flip them on another uh, app, uh, East, uh, I said, I was about to say East Bay. That's telling my age again. eBay. Uh, you know, you know, rehabbing them and then put them back on marketplace, offer up what have you. I get them for free and I only can sell them for twenty dollars. So five things, twenty dollars a week. That's a hundred bucks, right? That's a hundred bucks a week. And then I say, and I'm only taking, and I'm on, and I'm saying I'm only upcharging the twenty bucks, free to twenty bucks, no matter what the product is. I mean, of course, I know I can get more for different products depending on what they are. But pick up everything free. You know, and then sell them on another site, do the arbitrage, and that's 20 bucks. So that's a hundred bucks. So now I have the hundred bucks. I have the hundred bucks, but I'm gonna keep doing that. I'm gonna keep doing that. So everything I'm doing, I'm gonna keep doing it over and over and over again every week. So, but so now I'm gonna take that first week, that hundred bucks. And then the only thing I'm gonna do is I got that hundred bucks. Now remember that part is still going every week. The hundred bucks is still coming in on different items, but so I'm going to take that hundred bucks, and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to a more well-off neighborhood, more well-off neighborhood. I mean, we're in Tampa, so I'm talking about South Tampa. I'm talking about what you know where the bougie area is at. The bougie area is wherever you're at. That's where I'll be, and then I will go to the Walmart, and then I will go into the Walmart, and then I will go to the clearance section. And then I would go to the clearance section because this is the reason why. You go to these bougie areas and the old money, their kids, 
they're not going in the clearance section in these bougie neighborhoods. Now, the old money people, the older people, they all in the clearance section. But the younger generation, they're not. They think, oh, my family got money. I got to buy top dollar. I can't buy clearance. When I have parents, they might be in the clearance section, but it'll be so much stuff in the clearance section. I would be in the clearance section. And the only thing I would be doing is scanning the different items that's in the clearance section while I'm at Walmart, seeing what do they sell for online. You know, around the world, you know, what you sell for. So I would take that hundred bucks and buy as many items as I can. Remember, I'm still getting the, the money from the arbitrage, from the free stuff from Facebook Marketplace. And then now I'm selling the stuff from uh, Walmart online from the clearance section. So let's say I'm, get, I'm grabbing, you know, two, three items from Walmart. So now it's a hundred dollars a week from there. I mean, from Facebook. Then let's say I'm grabbing two or three items and I'm flipping it. Let's say 100% profit. Let's just say I'm grabbing another 150 from there. So now that's 250. That's 250 a week. And I keep grinding, keep grinding, keep grinding, keep grinding, keep grinding. And I'm doing it. The more, the more I generate on the free, the more I'm doing there. And I'm doing it. Then from there, the thing I would do is I would do another arbitrage which is go to things like uh, TJ Maxx, Ross, uh, Burden to Coat Factory. And then I would literally see stuff in clearance. I'm only going to clearance. And I would take pictures of the different items in there. And yep, I'm going to be that dude, that ghetto dude, folding up, making it look nice, taking pictures of it, taking pictures of it, and putting it online. It won't cost me nothing because I'm in there like I'm a shopper. I'm taking pictures, putting it online, selling it. So then I will get sales online, and then I will take the money from the sales online, and then the and then I will go buy the item at the you know TJX Burn to Coat Factory. So now that's bringing me in, let's say another two three hundred dollars a month. So combined total every week, so that's a hundred one fifty. That's two fifty. And then let's say another two fifty. So now that's five hundred dollars a week. Five hundred dollars a week, and I'm I'm still grinding. I'm still doing I'm still doing all of those things. And then so as I'm stacking this money up, piling this money up, piling this money up, piling this money up. The next thing I would do is something that's so boring, so non-existent, so nobody pays attention to. I would find something that is stupid, boring. Stupid boring, meaning in Florida, only person that's still cutting their own grass is Alex and me. I'm trying to tell you, uh, everybody else, they, they paying people to do it. So what I would do is, one, I would just go get a lot more and then start a lawn care service. But me, my my preferential uh, ideal is I like to buy revenue than create it. So what I would do is I would keep stacking that money up and then... I would look for a very small, you know, a mom and pop lawn care service that already have a couple contracts in the neighborhood. And then I would use that money to buy the mom and pop deal to, you know, get the equipment. And I'm taking the contracts that they already have. I mean, roughly it's about what, 150 bucks a, a month. So 150 bucks a month per house. And let's say it's, you know, 10, 20 houses that they got. Right. So let's say let's use 20 houses in that small little uh, ordeal. 150 bucks. Now I need a calculator because my, I'm getting retarded. It's more than one plus one, so I can't do it. So uh, so let's say 150 times 20. Three, 3, so that's th so that's 3000 bucks a month. So I'm still. Uh, but the thing is, is I'm still doing it. I'm sending my wife out there to do the do the uh, arbitrages and finding the free stuff on the marketplace. Me in my spare time when I'm not cutting the grass and stuff like that, I'm uh you know I'm going to the taking a hundred dollars and going to the uh you know WalMarts and different things like that being in clearance. I'm still arbitraging on eBay. So I'm still doing that. So now that takes me that takes me to three thousand bucks a month. Of course, I'm not going to take the whole three thousand because you got gas maintenance, you know, and stuff like that. And then I'm going to keep doing that, and I'm keeping every cycle going. I'm keeping every cycle going. So I'm so I'm now I'm in the you know got the small lawn care service, 
And then what I'm doing is everybody that I already have under contract to acquire new people, I'm undercutting everybody else in the neighborhood. So if somebody's paying one, you know, $150, $200, I'm undercutting everybody to acquire business. Acquire business, acquire business. So if other people cutting their grass for 200 bucks a month, they're coming in a hundred dollars, hundred fifty. Because I just want to acquire your business, acquire, acquire, build that out, build it out, build it out. So instead of 20 customers now, I got 50. I got 50, yeah, my margins is not that high, but I now I have 50. And then and then what I do gradually over time, you know, put them on automated payment, and then I will slowly raise it up, but you know, doing quality work. So now I took that from 150 with 20 people to let's just say 125 with 50 people, with 50 customers on the lawn care service. So now that's $6,200 a month. And then the next thing I would do is I would keep all that money and then I would go acquire a bigger lawn care service. So you can, and the only thing you got to do is go into your local neighborhood. I mean, your, your, uh, uh, biz.com, bizforsale.com or business for sale and then look up lawn care services in your city, your state or whatever and now we use that capital to buy another one. Rinse and Pete, grow it bigger. Grow it bigger. So now instead of 50 customers, now I got 150 customers. 150 customers times 125 and let's say I'm just doing 125 now not 150. 125 times 150 customers now that's $18,000 a month. $18,000 a month, of course, I'm, I'm keeping on staff and stuff like that. So 18000 18, uh revenue a month times 12 times three. 12 is a year, and then three is a multiple of the revenue. That's 675000 That's just for law. That's the valuation of the lawn care by itself. Two businesses, 675000 I still got the arbitrages going with, you know, um, the free stuff on marketplace. I still got the arbitrage going with the Walmart buy, but that right there sends you to close to a million dollars just off that alone. Without nothing high tech, all low tech, and driving around doing manual labor to make it happen. Alex, what you got? You stole a lot of mine. Um, I because I look back and I think of like everything that I know now and how I could just restart the whole process that I did from the beginning. The, I, I started all that from the beginning was um, I didn't do the Facebook marketplace, find the free stuff, but I did go around and go to the Goodwills. I went to Salvation Armies. I went to different uh, garage sales and stuff like that, where I'm finding stuff for pennies on the dollar and I'm flipping them now. Yeah. Facebook marketplace is, I mean, one big thing people have to understand too, is it doesn't have to be, full maxed out profit if you find something free anything above free is a profit so you want to find it especially in a situation like that where time is not of the essence you have to crunch and grind you're wanting to get off inventory as fast as possible you're not wanting to sit on inventory so whatever you get you're looking for the quickest and fastest profit just like you said if you're going to do um if you're going to start cutting grass you're looking to undercut everything in the area. If they're charging 200 a month, you're going to do it for a hundred a month, you know, and you, you want to undercut competition. So there is no competition. You are the only one making money sure. on those customers. And it's the same thing, you know, quantity really adds up over, you know, just trying to maximize your profit. You know, it's different if you only have, say they're doing 200 a month and you can undercut, cut them for 180 because you're being tight and then you only manage to get three or five customers. Whereas if you offer say, and get all of 20 for a hundred a month, they're all going to take that. And, you know, when you're selling stuff, especially buying things for, if I'm, if I know the, the retail price of an item is $50, I might sell it for 25 or 30. If I can get it for a price below that, you know, I'm trying to just get the, get the products and sell it. Um, and aside from that, I mean, it's not to say that one can't have a job. Um, and let's just say, you know, in, in certain scenarios where people are, um, let's just say go flat broke, no house, no apartment, and they're trying to find a place to stay. If you go the route where, let's say someone listening to this, if you're completely broke and you're trying to live with someone, 
you need to be an asset of that household. Do not be a liability. Don't be laying around doing nothing. You need to show the person that you are finding every way possible to produce an income and you're cleaning, you're cooking, you're doing everything in that house that that person does not want to do. You're doing their laundry, you're folding their laundry. You're you are living on behalf of their, you know, of their goodness of their heart or their their favor. They don't have to take care of you. So if you find someone in that situation where they're willing to take you into their own home because you are in a terrible situation, you need to do everything possible to keep earn your keep. And if and see that as a as a blessing or showing of gratitude that that person is willing to keep you there at let's say free of cost if you can manage that if not then you need to be producing that income to pay them but um even if you do have to find somewhere crappy to rent you know this is where we go back to saying those are sacrifices you have to make when you are broke living in cheap apartments in in the ghetto or whatever roaches in the apartment that if that's all you can afford because you're flat broke that's all you can afford but people have they set such high standards they are flat broke and they still want to live in apartments with granite countertops and you know hard wood floors and all this stuff but you have to set that stuff aside you have to make the sacrifices necessary and just the knowledge i have now i know that i would use profits that i'm making and I know how to invest now. I know how I know what stocks to buy. I know how to study a stock. I know how to trade options. I know what are dividend kings and aristocrats. I know now how to negotiate with buying properties. And the things that I've learned too with buying properties is buying a property is not difficult. It just requires capital. That's it. It's you know, you need to know how to negotiate. You need to know how to make an offer. You might need to know different ins and outs of real estate which you can find easily online like we said if you had a cell phone right. um but it's as simple as you have the capital you know what offer you need you make the offer um it's really not that not that hard um once you do learn it so that's why i say like with everything i know now i know that i could I would I think I could accelerate myself way faster than I was at 18 or 16 selling stuff on eBay than than uh from that time without knowing what I know now. Yeah, and, and that's true. It's it's um and and it's all about understanding the framework of how money works. And and like I said at the beginning of this, is some things I still plan on implementing and you know, a lot of people in my family, they believe my my son is younger. Uh, he's just going to live a pampered life. And the lawn care service thing, I still plan on implementing with him. I want, I'm going to look to purchase. And of course, you know, everybody ain't able to do that. Well, start your own. Start your own. I don't think you need a lot more edger and some gas. I mean, today they got, and I have one, they have the they have the battery power. So you don't even need gas. You just need some electricity to charge it up. Um, start start there. I mean, yeah, my son's fortunate enough to have a, a father who can afford to pay for, you know, a lawn care service. I mean, nepotism is real, and I'm going to make sure he uses it to the full extent of his ability. You know, the, the son, the son, the daughters should benefit from the fruits of their father's labor. So people that think that nepotism is a bad thing they out of their damn mind but that's what i will do i mean i'm not going to just sit here and hand my son and say hey here go a whole bunch of money and you go do live your life i'm going to show him the value of work so how it will start is you know me looking to buy a small very small long care company and then we will continue and i will teach him how to acquire other companies you know, of course, he will know the bare bones from start to finish of how it works. It won't be it won't be a simple, oh, hey, you bought this. Now you sit back here and get passive income. No, you back there changing tires, filling up gas tank. You over here changing spark plugs. He's doing everything because I want him to understand the business and know the business. And then from there, once I fully grasp that he understands the business, then he will start staging to move out of the 
operational side and then move more into the management side. And then we will go to acquire uh, other ones. And that's what I'm, that's what the plan is. I mean, and this is absent of whatever he does and his, you know, if he decides to go to school in his degree fields or whatever. Because I want him to understand both sides of it. He can go out there and get a, a job, but I also want him to understand that there's other ways and other avenues also. So he would do both. And he probably sitting there looking like, Dad, you're crazy right now if you're listening to this. But that's what he'll do. If not, I'll, I'll beat him up. That's that's what I did. But that's but that's honestly my plan for him. I want him to get his studies and all that stuff. If he you know decides to get you know corporate job, that's fine. But he will also understand the other side of it. You know, my son, he's nine years old now. When he turns twelve, he will be walking properties with me. He will be doing the grind on the day to day with me, just so he can understand what's going on. Because in the end of the day, only thing guaranteed is I'm going to die. So he needs to understand what's going on. Now, if he continues to go in the path that I'm going, that's on him. But I'm not going to absolve him of not knowing what's out there for him if he don't want to do the avenue that he's doing. I mean, you see it all the time. People are like, oh, I went to law school. I can't be a lawyer. All oh, life's over. Life's not over. Life's just beginning. But there's many avenues out there to make money. Only thing you need to do is understand, and I'm talking to the viewers, is understand the framework of how money's made. Once you understand that, everything must be taken care of. So that being said, guys, if you like the video, hit the like button. Uh, leave a comment down below. Share this video. Subscribe. We'll see you guys in the next one.